Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Goshen Christian Church and our Christmas Eve service of 2016. Bow with me for our opening prayer. Father God, thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to this earth. To be born among us, to live and die and bring us salvation. We're grateful that we can celebrate that birth this time of the year. We're grateful, Father, that we can be together with family and friends. We're grateful, Father, that we can be together here tonight to honor you and your son. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're starting off our service with kind of an unusual Christmas carol, The Twelve Days of Christmas. And that song is going to be kind of long and monotonous. So once we get to the sixth day, on the sixth day, ladies, we're going to sing. The men are going to do the seventh. And we'll go back and forth like that through the eleventh day. So six through eleventh, ladies, men, ladies, men. And on the twelfth verse, we'll all sing it together. So we'll see how they do this. Thank you. 
Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea in Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be with his wife and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
Frank missed his brother and the close companionship that they had shared together. He said goodbye to his relatives and explained to his parents that he was leaving a little early to go see a friend. From there, he would walk on home. Since it was cold outside, Frank put on his new plaid jacket. It was his favorite gift. He placed the other presents on his new sled and then headed out, hoping to find his patrol leader of his Boy Scout uh, troop. Frank always felt understood by him. Though rich in wisdom, his leader lived in the flats. That's the section of the town where most of the poor people lived. His patrol leader did odd jobs to help support his family. Frank's disappointment, his friend was not home. As Frank, Frank hiked down the street toward home, he caught a glimpse of trees and decorations in many of the small houses. Then through one front window, he glimpsed a shabby room with limp stockings hanging over an empty fireplace. A woman was sitting nearby in the candlelight. He could see her, and she was weeping. The stockings reminded him of the way he and his brother Frank had always hung their stockings side by side. The next morning, they would be bursting with presents. A sudden thought struck Frank. He had done, not done his good deed for the day yet. All scouts do a good deed daily. Before the impulse passed, he knocked on the door. Yes, the sad voice of the woman answered. Seeing his sled full of gifts, she assumed that he was making collections. She said, I have no food or gifts for you. I have nothing, not even for my own children. But that's not why I'm here, Frank replied. Please choose whatever presents you want for your children from my sled. Why, God bless you, the amazed woman answered gratefully. She selected some candies, a game, a toy airplane, and a puzzle. When she took the scout flashlight, Frank almost protested, but he didn't. Finally, the lady's stockings were full. Won't you tell me your name? She asked Frank as he was leaving. Just call me the Christmas Scout, he replied. The visit left Frank touched. He was touched with an unexpected flicker of joy in his heart. He understood that his sorrow wasn't the only sorrow in the world. Before he left the flats, he had given away all the rest of his gifts. Even his plaid jacket had gone to a shivering boy. Now Frank trudged toward home, cold and uneasy. How could he explain to his parents that he had given all of his presents away? Where are your presents, son? asked his father as he entered the house. I gave them away, he answered in a small voice. The airplane from Aunt Susie? Your new coat from Grandma? Your flashlight? We thought you were happy with all of your gifts. I was. Very happy, Frank said quietly. But Frank, how could you be so impulsive? His mother asked. How do we explain to the relatives who spent so much time and gave so much love shopping for you? His father was firm. You made your decision, Frank. We cannot afford any more presents for you. With his brother gone and his family disappointed in him, Frank, Frank suddenly felt dreadfully alone. He had not expected a reward for his generosity, for he knew that a good deed should always be its own reward. It would be tarnished otherwise. So he did not want his gifts back. However, he wondered if he would ever again recapture the joy in his life. He thought he had this evening, but it had only been fleeting. He thought of his brother and sought himself to sleep. 
the next morning when he came downstairs, to, he found his parents listening to Christian music on, their, on the radio. Then he heard the announcer speak, Merry Christmas, everyone. The nicest Christmas story we have this morning comes from the flats. A crippled boy down there has a new sled this morning. Left at his house by an anonymous teenage boy. Another youngster has a fine plaid coat. And several families report that their children were made happy last night by gifts from the same teenage boy who simply called himself the Christmas Scout. Most of the children in the flats said that Christmas Scout was the personal representative of that old Saint Nick. Frank felt his father's arms go around his shoulders and he saw his mother smiling through her tears. Why didn't you tell us, son? We didn't understand. We are so proud of you. The carols came back over the air on the radio again, filling the room with music. Praise God, the King. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 and 8 says, If there are any poor among you in one of the towns of the land of the Lord, your God, do not be selfish or greedy toward them, but give freely to them and freely lend them whatever they need. This story reminded me that God loved us so much that he sent his son as that indescribable gift that was given to us. Think about that as you go and take the book. Shall we pray? Lord, bless the emblems that represent the broken body of our Lord and Savior and the shed blood that he freely gave because he loved us that much. Father, we thank you for that indescribable gift. Bless us as we partake of these emblems now. In Jesus' name, amen.